Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Um, Shabbat Shalom. I received, um, Mauricio couldn't be with us today, but I received from him, because uh, he, he edits the, um, in Spanish, the, the message, and he said, I agree, the problem, honestly, is when we base our spirituality on emotions, desires, or feeling unresolved uh, or unresolved feelings within us. That's the problem today. We want to to look for spiritual things without solving problems. You see, I know I've met a lot of people who are very spiritual and they spend a lot of time talking about spiritual things, but their lives are a mess. They they are not settled in their lives. They have problems in so many different areas, but it's almost like they're separating the body and the emotions and the spirit. And we cannot do that because we're holistic beings. We're, we're one. Our God is one. And he, um, we can't go around boasting how spiritual we are if we cannot get our life together. We have to learn about boundaries. We have to learn about self-control. We have to learn about things that, to tell you the truth, took me years to learn. And I'm speaking from personal experience because I was so spiritual, so involved in all the new age spirituality, but my life was a total mess. Everything, my family, everything. And so little by little, Rabbi, our rabbi had to bring me down to earth. I was one of those who were called very fly -a, always <laughs> living in the moon, never with my feet planted on the ground. If we can't take care of our finances, if we can't take care of our families, we can't take care of our, uh, our relationships and learn how to change ourselves from within, heal our emotions, spirituality means nothing. It's all empty fluff. So that's what I got out of this message. I agree 100%. I was also involved in the New Age, but in a different way from you. Um, but I think God allowed, I mean, we all have our own journey, but in my case, because uh, I grew up in an atheist home, but God used that in some ways to wake it, awaken me to the fact that there is a spiritual realm. And he had to bring me, thank God, Baruch Hashem, he brought me out of the false spirituality into his, uh, his uh, real uh, spiritual uh, reality. Exactly. They're, they're deceiving. <clears throat> There's the counterfeit. It's just like, remember, Rabbi said when they used to, he worked with the government and he said when they, when they were teaching um, people in the FBI or wherever to recognize counterfeit money, they had to study the real money for weeks and weeks and weeks without ever seeing anything counterfeit. And only then would they be able to read the counterfeit. It's like I worked, I was the manager of a of, um, the business of a man who was a channeler, and he he would channel the prophet Isaiah. He would go into a trance, open his eyes, and all of a sudden speak words which he said was coming from the prophet Isaiah. If I had read the prophet Isaiah in the Bible, I would have known that none of thing that this man was saying was true. If we don't know the Torah, if we don't know our Bible. We cannot recognize the lies. We're, we, we have to say, each and every one of us here, how blessed we are that God revealed himself to us. Because what would our lives be if he hadn't? Yeah, sure. And, you know, sometimes I get upset at either people in my family or friends that I know, or I get upset with people. Why aren't they believing this? But then I realize maybe God just hasn't opened their eyes yet. It's not their fault. God allowed me to go through all those years, 40 years of going through so many wrong ways for a reason. And now I recognize the counterfeit from the real thing. What I find also is not only can we be involved in, in counterfeit uh, realities, but there are people, because I remember even in the New Age or even in different things I was involved in, I would see people that really had a, a certain feeling of something special about them, like a goodness about them. 
And I remember meeting all the, I met this man. This was after I learned, uh, was on my path to the, to the creator of the universe. Remember this man who, I, I'm sure he had PTSD. He had been in, in Vietnam and he'd seen horrors and, and um, he ended up becoming a Christian. But my point is this, whatever he, there was something about him, even with his PTSD and all his stuff, there was something so beautiful about him that it, 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 something about him. So I'm saying, God, I think, works through these things. And some people are, are really called by God. They just don't know it yet, but we can see something special in them. I just seen so many people like that. And then there are others who seem, there's something that doesn't seem right. They're, 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 they're um, false worship or whatever doesn't seem to have anything behind it i don't know that's just my experience that that you could be in the wrong thing but just beyond you haven't yet realized that you you know you're doing wrong and the god of the universe or the real creator you haven't met that creator yet and then there are other people who seem to have been yeah you know, well remember you said this is an extreme example Peggy, that um um who was it who some uh, um, a woman remember Ted Bundy, the, the mass murderer? Yes, said, I was listening to an interview with her and she said that she went out on a date with this man and there was something about him. They were sitting in the restaurant and she looked at him and she said it was like he had no soul. And she got so something inside her became so frightened, so fearful. She went to the bathroom. Then she ran to a payphone. She called her brother and she said, please come and pick me up right away. She never went back to the table. She just left. And later she saw in the newspaper that he had been arrested uh, for mass murder. And it was Ted Bundy that she had had. She could have been next. But somehow she was, I guess, God showed her inside. She recognized that spirit. I've seen in the new age, I've been with people not as bad as that. But I have seen that emptiness, that soullessness. Well, you were talking about, um, you know, about being chosen, you know, uh, or, or a calling. The scripture says that many are called, but few are chosen. So I believe that many people have the call. God calls all of us, but he's given us free will. But he also, it's its very difficult to explain the spiritual realm because we're living in a, in a three-dimensional realm. So it's very hard for us to understand <clears throat> the nature of the spirit, of the soul. But many are given gifts and they're, they're chosen. Like Joseph was chosen. Joseph had a calling, but he was also chosen. And he was chosen for a very huge calling. Some have a lesser calling, but many of us are called to to deal with something and it takes our free will to choose yes to do it or not to do it why i have no idea you know my daughter said to me this week mommy why can't you just be normal <laughs> why are you always you you're, you're always fanatic you're always like so intense why can't we just have a normal conversation and i said i don't know i have this sense of a higher calling and I just, I don't know how to be any other way. I don't know how to be normal. I've never been normal. I've always felt like an alien. So <laughs> I guess I had to be this way in order for me even to run this small group. You know, I've, I've, God has used me to keep it going, even though sometimes I don't want to. I want to run away. I want to go to the beach. I want to go live in, you know, among the palm trees and drink coconut juice, you know, <laughs> But we each have a calling and we have to be true to that because it's the only way that we will find meaning and purpose in this life. But look how long it took Joseph. Look how long it took him to be able to live, actually step into his calling. He had to go through being hated by his entire family, being sold as a slave, being in the pit, going to Egypt, serving in a prison. For how long? First in with Potiphar, and then in 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 the and two more years in prison in prison for being falsely accused. All his pride was broken, and let me tell you, when your pride is broken, 
it hurts. I remember, remember Rabbi Percy would talk about that. He was so inflated. He was like a big balloon. And then God took a pin and his balloon was deflated. And he said he was just so grateful that when he fell, he fell face up. At least he could look up to God and say, help. Remember he said he went, woo. He went, woo, the balloon went down. <laughs> and let me, and, and I know what that is. And even now, if I tend to have a little bit of pride about something that I'm doing, it's not long before God takes his hand and right behind my knees, he gives me a little knack and I'm reminded mostly by my children of who I am. So it's, uh, I yeah. guess I don't know fully, maybe this is a mystery, but when I see people like I was working, when I was working in the, the school and um, uh, I, I became, I became friendly just on a, I just, this woman, Farida, Iranian Muslim, um, we just had a connection, totally different people and whatever. And she would pray like three times a day, whatever, whatever the Muslim routine is. And she would. It's five, five times a day. We pray times? three. No, we're, five. Three. yeah, yeah. But we're three, know. they're five. Oh, okay. We're three. I thought it was the same. Anyway, she would pray. Part, one of her prayers was at lunchtime and sometimes I, I would I would sit regularly like there and she didn't mind she said oh stay stay so um and she just lived she was such a uh, uh, she just seemed like a really godly person she really had a relationship with god so sometimes i don't understand but i think you know even though the form she was brought up in and that she adhered to was a false one that I think when she prayed, she was praying to the only God. So I don't really understand how that works, you know, like that I think some people are true, even if they're in a false religion. So um, I don't really have an answer to that, but uh, I just wonder about that sometimes. Yeah, I don't have an answer for that either, but I guess you, you know, what Yeshua said, by your fruits, you will know them. Yeah. <clears throat> and and there are wheat and tares, you know, there are the false, those who are false believers and those who are true. And it wasn't her fault that she was born into that culture, but God may you know, have revealed himself to her. She just calls them by a different name, but her, by her actions, you can, you can see. Yeah. You know, we, we can't judge a book by its cover. It takes time to be able to see who a person really is by what they do, not by what they say. A lot of people have a lot of beautiful things to say, but their actions are very different. Right. So that's why we have to watch. Anything else to share, anybody? I would love to hear from somebody who rarely shares something. Etid, Isabel. Alejandro, Yannette, Rhonda, the silent majority. Uh, Angel always has good things to say. Yes, uh, um, it's interesting if you read the chapter, uh, previous chapter 40, how Joseph talks and tells, hey, uh, remember me, tell Pharaoh. Right. So there already knew that in advance that this will happen you know in the sense of that the world will go towards uh, the, the Pharaoh in the sense of uh, you know it was in the pit in the lowest lowest that you could be and only the highest 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 could take him out right it tells you the the the, um, the belief the connection that he had with spirit, with the creator, that when we listen, he knew, he believed in him. And because of that, well, the time, uh, yeah, there are certain things that they needed to, to be in, in alignment in order for him. In this case, well, uh, the creator, I guess, uh, used these two, uh, uh, two men that worked for the Pharaoh and then the, that they were put in prison as a way of bringing this uh, knowledge about uh, Joseph and his connection that he had with the creator, with spirit, which is 
when you understand what that means, you know, it, it goes beyond uh, thinking about just the creator. It means wisdom. It means, you know, life. It means, it means uh, understanding, you know, uh, no, it's only spiritual, but it's about knowledge of life, you know, knowledge of what to do in certain uh, situations, you know. Exactly. And, and that only comes with uh, the experience. Uh, well, sometimes we learn it from experience, you know, in our lives. And uh, sometimes it comes by guidance too. You know, exactly. when we don't know, we pray the creator and the creator uh, will uh, allow us to see things that will uh, probably, you know, uh, help us to uh, make um, better decisions, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Oh. Thank God for him. I know this week it, it was a it was a hard week. I had a lot of stress this week. First of all, writing a message is not an easy thing. It takes a lot out of out of me. And uh, even though it's a blessing, it's just very difficult. But there was one night that I just could not get to sleep, and I was up till three thirty in the morning. But it's usually at that time when I know that I have to start going within and really speaking to God and asking for help to understand because I was also suffering physically. I was this because the stress attacks the body, <clears throat> excuse me, physically. And so, and one of the things that I noticed was that I was really frightened, frightened because also what's been going on in Israel, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the kidnappings, the, the attacks, what, sometimes when I'll get into bed at night, I think of the of the young women who have been raped and brutally murdered and the, just what's going on. And it, it makes me very fearful for my own family, for my own children. And and then I, I just talk to God about it. And it's almost like he speaks to me in a way that, of course, not through his words, but he has this, God knows how to communicate with us. He puts ideas and thoughts into our hearts. And I remember thinking that God has given us a coping mechanism. That's the only way we can get through very difficult situations and that he is a God of mercy. And so I was thinking God would be merciful to these people. He would not allow them to go through so much that they they would that's that's what how i felt it's the only way that helped me to cope with all this and that i didn't have anything to fear even if you see i've lost everything in my life several times and always had to begin again but now i'm much older and the start of the, the idea of beginning again is very frightening but i had to remember that god is with us. He, that's what he said to Jacob. I am with you and I will be with you always. And if everything is taken away from me again, he will still be with me no matter where I am. So I can rely on that and I can trust in that. And then he dealt with me in several other areas that I had to, I had to look at and, and slowly my fears were erased and I was able to fall asleep. We must deal with the issues, the stresses that are sometimes just below the surface. And usually they come out in a physical way. You may get a headache. You may get uh, something breaks out on the body. Very often our, our emotionals, emotional things that we're not dealing with will come out in a physical way. That's why I always need to go and search and I don't always realize that that's happening to me until, boom, it hits me. And this time it hit me almost feeling like I was so exhausted that I felt like I was getting the flu. And then I said, okay, slow down and let's take a look at what's going on. We must deal with all areas of our life. Our financial areas, we must be clean in them. It, it, the, the scriptures say, it is he who is evil who does not repay. If you owe people money, you pay them back. We are not poor. We are rich in God. Everything that we have is provided for us. And we must find a way to give back to him. 
We give to charity. You give to your community. You always give back. That shows that you trust in him. So there's so many things. We have to look at our homes. What is out of order? What are we not putting in order? God is not a God of chaos. He's a God of order. And these things can be fixed little by little, one step at a time, until all of a sudden we have peace. That's what God gives us. The Torah is an instrument of peace, of love. It's an instrument. Of, it shows us of God's mercy to us. And it's up to us to spread it to all the nations, mm -hmm. to bring it to all the world. Here we have someone here from Uganda, someone from the world. And it's up to you to deliver it to your people. Isabel, you come from Peru. You're married to an Italian. You're, you're given this to bring to your people around you. Angel, you come from Spain. Literally, Sarai from Mexico. Alejandro from Venezuela. Our people come from, we're here from all over the world. We are a true United Nations. The United Nations today that calls itself a United Nations is anything but a United Nations. They have no truth in them. But this United Nations, who brings the Torah, ki mitzion te Torah, from, from Zion will come the Torah. And we represent Zion. We re represent the people of Israel. It's up to us to bring the world the Torah. To, by living it, not by going out and preaching it, and without living it, because let me tell you, people can smell hypocrisy. It's easy. That's why kids don't listen to their over-religious parents. Although no kids are listening to their parents at all anymore. <laughs> well, that's another story. <laughs> this is what the world is preaching. Anyway, my friends, anything more to say before we yes, go? I want to say, uh, Peggy, that you have, we need to look at the things how they are, okay? Yes. In the story of Joseph, he was not preaching the God of uh, Israel to the Pharaoh. So that eliminates completely everything that has to do with religion. Yes. What is he was preaching? What he was bringing? He was bringing a, a testimony to the Pharaoh, okay? The power of the spirit of the creator yes. when we come to him. Okay. Yes. Even the Pharaoh, if we read in the verse where he says, like, uh, well, uh, who else in Egypt could have such a discernment, like even has a discernment of the, the Elohim. Right. Pharaoh. Exactly. Remember that the Elohim, what it means Elohim. Okay. We have to be careful. When you know it, you know it. Now, it means that there, this wisdom that was, you know, uh, that he could connect uh, somehow in, in his, uh, let's say, uh, from the beginning when the Creator chose him for this special uh, 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 task, okay, that he will have to go through a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, a period of of preparation and, and, and knowing that uh, it's, how can I say, it's, it's about spirit and the connection with spirit. So what is in all of us? That means that anyone who's open and opens his heart to the creator spirit that is within us, we will accomplish things that no human ever will ever uh, imagine. We can even move mountains, he says. No, knowing that, knowing that a human that connects with a, a spirit, with a creator, you know, that is, that is the reason why we are in this condition all this time. We don't have knowledge of our own magnificence. When yes. we realize that the creator dwells on us and that we just have to reconnect with him, okay? That is opening our hearts, opening our minds up, giving to him, you know, the, the, uh, the place or the, the allowance that he deserves through our lives until we don't stop doing things like we want to do in our lives. Yes. And we put, God, oh no, let me, God, I, I need to do this. You know, it's just important for me, but you can wait. Or, you know, things like that, you know? Right. And, uh, and 
yeah, so from the moment that we understand that, you know, there is nothing impossible. Look what happened with the life of Joseph, you know, and and other men also that that God manifest uh, his uh, his his magnificent, you know, yes. through their lives. As always, you know, you have you were saying also that there is many many uh, people that, especially those people that they are channelers and all that. Yes, that they are very fake. They are very fake. But uh, you know, just the fact that the kingdom, in this case of uh, in that time of Egypt, they have so many magicians among them. Not only G Egyptians, but also you can find all the civilizations, you know, in history, human history. Exactly. We're working still, for, and they're still there. They're still alive and well. Because there is another realm that is not from this world. And there is a lot of knowledge that human has not reached or better said, has been deprived until the time which is we are living right now. Right. Human consciousness is being elevated at, to the point that we're gonna understand our magnificence, yes. who we are, how great we are as a human, as just the fact when we say, People say, oh, uh, you know, we are uh, made at the image and likeness of God. Like it's a, just a phrase, you know. But right. do you, have you ever stop and think about what that, this, uh, what this uh, phrase means exactly? You know, it says it's too much that you could even possibly imagine. So now when we are bound by fears, as you said, fears are the number one. Now, trust beats the fears. Exactly. So you know that whatever happens, that you don't have control of it. But as Joseph was in the prison, he knew that something had to happen. The same thing with Abraham, when he was in front of his child, son, with a knife up to the top. Something had to happen. And this is when the spirit intervenes, okay? Right. Not to exalt the man, because we are all equal. Because we, if you, Peggy, are made at the image of the creator, and likeness, despite that you're a female, you know, and, uh, you know, despite your personality, <laughs> that it looks very individualistic, I am made at the same image and likeness of the creator. Right. That tells you that we are all, you know, uh, how can I say, we have a common denominator, you know, it's a, the spirit of the creator, it's the one who unifies us. So this, yes. despite of your beliefs, like you were saying, talking about this uh, Arab woman. Yes. If she has encountered or she has, you know, a, a connect to spirit, you know, the creator is creator of all, everyone, exactly. every human being on the planet. So exactly. what else do we have to, you know, uh, but it's very important. Yeah, well, this is my my opinion about that, and I hope that. No, it's beautiful. It's true. It's true. Sarai, ¿cómo estás? Hola, Peggy. Hola, Hola. todos. Chava Chalón. ¿Dónde está? Muy bien, gracias al eterno. En México, aquí. En México. Con, con Brian. Nada más que este, Brian está resfriado, entonces ahorita está... Recostado, ya lo inyecté. Angel, what did she say about Brian? What, what Brian? What? What did she say? She said something. She's with her son, Brian. ¿Qué dijiste, perdona, Sarai? Dijiste algo de Brian, que está enfermo, que tiene la... Sí. He's sick. It seems that he has all or something. ¿Tiene un resfriado? ¿Tiene un resfriado? Sí, está resfriado. Yeah. No, no, Brian Benjamin. No, Brian Shulman. No, no. It's, 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 it's Brian it's, Pineda. Brian Pineda. Es su, es su aniversario pronto, ¿no? <laughs> but, but, el, el lunes cumpleaños, Brian, sí. Sí, mi hijo. Ok. Sí. Este con, este con, con este ahora? Sí. ¿Dónde es Brian? Uh, él está recostado, es, 
este... Ok, tell him we want to sing him happy birthday, que quiero cantar a... Um, uh, Compleaños feliz, compleaños a ti, compleaños Brian, compleaños feliz. Ay, bravo. Espérame <laughs> tantito. Ok, mami is there, everything's ok. Mami está allá con él, todo va bene, va bene. <laughs> Poco italiano. <laughs> sí, va bene. <laughs> well, if that's all anybody wants, thank you, Angel, for your, your input. Miriam, thank you for your input. Moshe, nice to see you. Etid, Isabel, good to see everybody. Let's keep the, our community in prayer. Give us strength and courage and, uh, and a sense of our purpose and our calling. And let's keep um, our country, Israel, in our prayers and our own countries right here for the, our politicians are be growing more and more crooked and uh, <laughs> life is not easy when the, when the leaders of our Congress, of our cities are, are not, don't have our, our best uh, in their hearts. They're, they're very selfish and think only of themselves. So. Peggy, it's all about the system that we created. Oh, I know. They wouldn't um, be in there if it wasn't for us. And this system is falling. This it is very... it cannot sustain itself. No, it is telling you at the end of times where everything will be changed, everything will be uh, people will realize and see the structure that we live in into from all aspects of life economically, yeah. uh, religiously, yes, uh, you know, everything. Yeah. And now is where we, the change is coming, yes. There are changes, and the problem right now that we're dealing with is with the people who has invested a lot of in their old ways. Yes. And time has come what is new days. You know, it is very sad that the uh, the new age, the, the term new age, has been trampled and used so badly mm. to the point that the people not anymore believe that it's going to be a new time where humanity is going to change the love is gonna be uh, f uh flowing you know through the men's hearts yes and women is gonna look after each other whatever you are in africa whatever you are in asia whatever yes. you are in South america we want to take care of each one of us Amen. and we, we're gonna realize that there is no religion who can separate us there is no laws that can divide us because of color right. or because of race or because of no, we are all one humanity. Amen. So and and the creator which lives in every single uh human that has been created the image and likeness of the creator, each all of us, we are all equal and uh, before the eyes of the creator. Amen. You know? Thank you, Angel. What a wonderful way to this um this delicious time together yes thank you we always have to remember that beautiful hope of what we're looking forward the restored garden of eden the the where we'll be walking israel will be the center and and israel is called the navel of the earth do you realize that the israeli army is now is the only army really who's fighting against this this war against terror the world is not doing that we are standing alone, this people, God's people. And that's why we have to keep them up in prayer. Just the way Moses won the battle against Amalek, when the two men, Hur and I don't remember the other one, Joshua, I think, and Hur, held their his arms up. Every time his arms were up and he prayed, we were winning the war against Amalek. Well, we're still fighting the war against Amalek. So let's let's continue to pray and hold up the arms of of the uh, the IDF soldiers. So Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat and shalom. we'll see you, God willing, next week. Goodbye, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Bye bye. bye, bye. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Sari. Shalom. Bye, bye, Tisha. Bye, bye. bye, Brian. Bye, bye. bye Rhonda. Bye, bye Alvarado. Bye, 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 Mildred. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 bye.